Um, welcome, everyone, and thanks for attending this session. I'm Harris, and uh, I work as a researcher at Zarlinx. Uh, some of you may not know uh, about Zarlinx, so I will quickly introduce my company. Zarlinx is um, the inventor of FPG, which goes along with other hardware technologies such as general purpose CPUs, GPUs, and ASICs. Typically, FPGAs are used for uh, accelerating application for performance and energy efficiency. I have been involved with uh, um, the different Hyperledger projects for the last two years. And more specifically, I have been working um, on Fabric and looking into different uh, and scalability issues. So I will give an introduction of the performance and scale work group um, at Hyperledger. And then I will introduce uh, some of our work uh, and how we are trying to tackle some of these sustainability uh, blockchains. So if you have any questions along the way, uh, you can post it um, in the Q&A tab on the right-hand side, and I will leave a few minutes at the end to answer those questions. So PSWG um, is uh, basically the performance and scalability um, a work group, a forum at Hyperledger to look into these performance and scalability issues. Hyperledger projects. Uh, the group um, is not uh, tied to any one particular uh, project, and uh, it's supposed to look into all the different projects under Hyperledger, but uh, most of the work has been done on Fabric because Fabric is the most popular uh, uh, Hyperledger project. So in terms of the goals, the group started with two uh, main focuses. One was on performance evaluation. Uh, for example, the idea there was to uh, look into different type of metrics that can be used uh, to compare um, different uh, blockchain platforms and different projects under Hyperledger. And early on, the PSWG group uh, published a white paper on metrics. Uh, in the same context, uh, PSWG was also involved with some of the early work on Hyperledger Caliper, which is the tool now mostly used for benchmarking uh, different Hyperledger projects. Focus the group was on uh, performance improvements and the scalability in blockchain deployments. Um, the goal here was to gather ideas uh, from different groups to see what kind of performance bottlenecks exist in these Hyperledger projects and how they can be scaled. And typically, the scaling involves either uh, scaling up, which is vertical scaling, where you cannot add more resources in a single node of a network, or you can scale out. Uh, another term is called horizontal scaling, where you can add more nodes into the network to uh, improve its uh, performance. Uh, so uh, in this context, uh, I had been uh, attending PSWG uh, meetings on and off. Uh, but recently, I got actively involved in the group. And, and now, now I'm uh, leading this uh, new effort to revive the group, uh, to revamp the group, and have more focus on scalability issues, especially from uh, people who are using these hyperledger projects and deploying them in uh, real world scenarios. So I would like to talk a little bit more about uh, scalability in blockchains. So when we look at a uh, proof of concept project and we want to move it into a real world deployment, uh, we would like to improve upon a few different performance metrics. For example, in a proof of concept, I might have two organizations, but in a real world deployment, I might want to add uh, five organizations. What that means is that we would have more transactions generated in the network, and hence the nodes in the network should be capable of handling uh, that much uh, workload and should have better or increased transactions per second throughput. Likewise, in a production environment, we might want to gather uh, much more data compared to a proof of concept, which means the transactions could have much larger size, which means that the blocks would be larger. And again, the network should be capable of uh, efficiently transferring larger blocks around the nodes and process them efficiently. So um, if we look at these uh, four different uh, performance metrics and we want to improve them, um, we have to look at both 
uh, individual nodes of a network, as well as scale out the network by adding more nodes uh, in the network and looking at the network traffic and how that could be handled in a better way. So at Xilinx, we believe that uh, if we want to improve these metrics and go beyond what is available um, uh, by software-only implementations, which are available nowadays, we need to bring in newer hardware technology not only give better compute resources, but also uh, give better network resources. Uh, going a little bit more details of this in what kind of work we have been doing at scalability. So coming back to PSWG, the group had been dormant for a while, and then we recently started to revamp it. And in the past two months, we are have tried to uh, uh, initiate two different threads in the group. The first thread is um, around performance evaluation. And uh, thanks to the technical working group in China, they have done a bit of work on, uh, quite a bit of work on a hyperledger fabric performance uh, evaluation and exploration, and they have uh, produce two different tools called tape and probe. The tape tool is very much like hyperledger caliper, but it's lightweight and can generate much higher transaction send rates and can better stress test a network. The probe tool, on the other hand, is an exploration tool where you can kind of explore how uh, the performance of a network behaves uh, based on a dif different parameters, for example, different block sizes or creation of a block, et cetera. Then the second thread we have been working on from um, myself and my colleagues at Xilinx. So we have been looking into how we can bring in a newer hardware acceleration technology and remove some of these, some of the performance bottlenecks uh, um, in permission blockchains and how we can use hardware accelerators to achieve performance and scalability beyond what is currently available uh, from software only solutions. So let me go into a little bit of more details of our work. Um, so a few ago, we started a project um, named Blockchain Machine at Xilinx. And the aim was to look into permission blockchains and see what kind of bottlenecks appear in permission blockchains. Um, if you look at um, public blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum, we can see that they're already using specialized hardware. For example, uh, Bitcoin is dominated by ASICs, uh, Ethereum is dominated by GPUs, and they use these ASICs and GPUs to have much higher uh, rates. Uh, uh, it is necessary for faster proof of uh, work consensus mechanism. Uh, but when we look at permission blockchains, the consensus mechanism does not use proof of concept. Uh, proof of work, uh, which means that the bottleneck now shifts from consensus to the validation nodes. And the validation nodes uh, share uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, core operations, for example, cryptographic operations and accesses from a data uh, holds the global state of the network. And these operations become a uh, bottleneck. So when on Hyperledger Fabric because Fabric was the most popular permissioned um, uh, blockchain under Hyperledger uh, umbrella. Uh, we looked at a lot of different operations which are, um, are done inside the validation node or a validator peer of a uh, network. And what you can see here on the graph on right hand side is that the ECDSA signature verifications are the most time consuming operation. And then there are other operations, for example, uh, computation of hashes based on SHA-256 and accesses from database, which becomes a big bottleneck in uh, Hyperledger Fabric validation process. So what we uh, was that can, can we scale up a validator peer in Hyperledger Fabric using specialized hardware, which is implemented on uh, FPGAs. And then we can accelerate or execute these bottleneck operations directly on the hardware. And with that in mind, we came up with this uh, modified validator peer in Hyperledger Fabric. There so is uh, uh, shown in this um, uh, figure on the right-hand side. So we split the operation 
in two parts. So the part on the right hand side with green boxes is all the operations which involve some kind of verification of the block or validation of the transactions or the endorsements, and then reading from database, applying some concurrency checks, etc. So all of these operations are actually executed on a hardware accelerator. And then the software, the CPUs, they still run the standard fabric uh, software, but they skip all these um, verification and validation operations and wait for the results of the validation from the hardware. And as soon as the validation results from the hardware are available, I'm merged with the block, and then the ledger is, the, the block is committed to the ledger. The CPU, just like any other uh, fabric peer. So what this helps us to do is that we can actually accelerate and uh, with much better performance the validation operations, which are the bottlenecks, while we keep the non-bottleneck operations still on the CPU uh, CPU side. Uh, so now let's look at the performance which achieve uh, from the setup. Um, if we exclude the ledger commit uh, part, which is basically run on the software side, either with the hardware accelerator or without the hardware accelerator, we were able to see, uh, observe uh, a 17 times improvement in block validation latency. And we were able to actually reach up to 95,000 transactions per second uh, as the commit um, uh, of the validator peer. And what I would like to mention here is that if you look at um, Visa payment system, uh, uh, these systems are supposed to be able uh, to uh, uh, process transactions per second at a peak rate. So what we are really trying to uh, uh, show here is that if we bring in hardware acceleration, hardware, specialized hardware technology into permission blockchains, we can break the software only barrier and then we can actually have a much better scalability in permission blockchains. So if you're interested in more details about this work, we recently put out a paper on archive. Uh, the link is embedded here. You can, uh, you can uh, go to that link and read the paper and the details. Uh, we also just started a new Hyperledger Labs project called Fabric Machine. This uh, the the fabric machine is not uh, readily usable at the moment, but we will be putting out a lot of uh, a lot more content uh, into this repo in the coming weeks. So you can actually, um, add yourself to the watch list of the repo so you can get all the updates and when it's ready to use you can actually uh, use it so coming back uh, to G, we have a couple of uh, uh, plans for for the next few months so so the first definitely organize some deep dive talks around the tools from technical working group china to talk more about performance evaluation and exploration for different blockchains uh, and then we're also going to have some deep dive talks on blockchain machine from settings which is what i just uh, uh, briefly uh, described to you but more importantly what uh, we are really looking for is to collaborate with other uh, groups under Hyperledger or other uh, industrial partners who have actually deployed these Hyperledger projects in real world scenarios. And we would like to really know from them what kind of scalability issues they are facing and whether some of this newer hardware acceleration technology can be used to address those issues which could not be addressed in this software only solutions. So please join us. We have uh, monthly meetings that I have uh, the link here for, uh, for those meetings as well. And if you want to uh, know more about uh, our work and you want to reach out to me directly, I have also provided uh, my contact details here as well. So with that, I will stop here and see if you guys have any questions. Okay, so any questions in the Q&A tab, but if you do have any questions, you can post them even uh, though that the session is supposed to end now, but um, uh, yeah, if you don't leave the session, I can still answer your questions here in the chat. So I'll wait another minute, and if there are no questions, then I will end the session.
Okay, so I guess there are no questions. So uh, thank you everyone um, uh, for your time and uh, coming to this session. And again, as I said, if you're really interested in our work, please join us at PSG to me directly. Uh, thank, thank you very much for your time.